All right, everybody, we are going to today learn about the discovery of King Tut's tomb. Now, a couple of things to know about King Tut. First of all, as a pharaoh, he's pretty overrated, and here's why. So he becomes pharaoh around the age of nine. Um, obviously, he can't rule as a nine-year-old. When he turns 18, he can fully rule, but then he died around the age of 19. Um, so as a pharaoh, he really didn't do too much. But the reason why he's as famous as he was has to do with his tomb. So Egyptologists and archaeologists discovering his tomb is what makes him famous. And I'm going to explain more in a little bit. So to start off, there is this guy named Howard Carter. Howard Carter is an archaeologist, Egyptologist from Great Britain. He had been searching for years and years and years for King Tut's tomb. Um, King Tut had something called a cartouche, which is a nameplate, um, and you'll see it um, a little later. It had been listed among an ancient list of pharaohs. So like the ancient Egyptians later on wrote a list of all their pharaohs, and they had found, archaeologists had found a whole bunch of their tombs, but never King Tut's. Um, his tomb had never been discovered. So, Carter decided in 1907 that he was going to tr try and discover King Tut's tomb. And just so we know, Tut is a short name. Um, the full name of King Tut is Tut an the, the H makes a kind of sound. Um, Tut an Khamen. And the reason why we don't say that, in addition to it being a mouthful, um, it has to do with the newspapers at the time. So, um, I'm going to talk more about that in a second. You'll see why he gets the nickname Tut. So many people told Howard Carter, it's not worth it. If you do find the tomb, grave robbers probably hit it years ago. You're wasting your time. Um, Howard Carter got somebody to sponsor him in Britain, this guy, Lord Carnarvon. And the deal that they made essentially was Lord Carnarvon would pay for all of Howard Carter's supplies and his salary and things like that. However, all the like riches and stuff um, that Howard Carter found would belong to Lord Carnarvon and Howard Carter would make money off of it in terms of like interviews and books and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they make the deal, but they have to wait till World War I ends. So, um, a little more than 100 years ago, Howard Carter goes to Egypt and starts exploring. And for years, he keeps searching. And Lord Carnarvon's paying the bill. And for years, Howard Carter finds nothing. Carter then, you know, has his annual meeting with Lord Carnarvon. And Lord Carnarvon's like, you've been trying for years and coming up empty. You know, why should I continue to pay this? You're probably not going to find it. And Howard Carter says, there's a small spot in the Valley of the Kings I haven't checked yet. Give me one more chance, one more archaeological season, and then if I don't find it, so be it. So Lord Carnarvon agrees to this request, and good thing he did. On November 5th, 1922, so almost exactly 98 years ago, in a couple of weeks it'll be 98 years to the day, a rock that was thought to have to be a step was found. So they started digging around this rock and they found a staircase with a door at the end. Some pretty exciting stuff. Um, now, Carter doesn't just say, let me in and stuff like that. He's, he's pretty uh, careful at first. I say at first because later on he's not careful. Carter makes a small hole at the top of the door, looks in, and saw the beginning of a passageway filled with sand and stones. He then says, okay, let's seal everything up, have a guard there to make sure nobody sneaks in, and let's send word to England so Lord Carnarvon could come and check it out too. All right. Well, on November 23rd, Lord Carnarvon gets there. Carter once again stands before the door, he makes another hole, lit a candle, and looked in. And this is kind of his famous quote here. He says, As my eyes grew accustomed to the light, details of the room emerged slowly from the darkness. 
strange animals, statues, and everywhere the glint of gold. When Lord Carnarvon inquired anxiously, can you see anything? It was all I could do to get the, out the words, yes, wonderful things. And what Howard Carter was seeing is the first of four rooms called the antechamber. And it was a complete mess. There were parts of thrones and vases and chariots and jewel boxes in heaps. So Carter was like, all right, we found the tomb, but grave robbers had to be there like at some point right after the pharaoh was buried. Um, the robbers had to move quickly, taking only the most portable objects. So he has a theory because it seems like they were in a rush. So this is his theory. What he thinks happened is um, the grave robbers broke in not long after King Tut died, and something caused them to have to leave quickly. And their their analysis is they think it was a massive sandstorm, which makes sense because then if the massive sandstorm hit, it probably covered up King Tut's tomb. And because it was a new tomb, the grave robbers, if they tried to come back, they wouldn't be able to find it. Now, I mentioned the name Tut is actually short for Tutankhamun. The reason why is um, this, you know, three letters, Tut. Um, they had to abbreviate the name Tutankhamun in the newspapers, because remember, there's no internet. It's 1923. There's no TV. 1922. There's no TV. There's only radio. Um, and there's newspapers. So the name Tutankhamun was too big to fit in the headlines, so they shortened it to Tut. So King Tut was not his name in ancient Egyptian times. That's like a modern shortening of the name for newspaper headlines. By February, they opened and cleared the antechamber, and then Carter was finally open, ready to open the burial chamber. And on February 17th, that next year, hundreds of people crowded outside the tomb. Its discovery captivated the world. There were songs being sung about King Tut, jokes being told. Um, women's fashion and jewelry was very Egyptian influence. And then once inside the burial chamber, Carter found a gold shrine that nearly filled the room. And there he found a sarcophagus and then another sarcophagus and a third sarcophagus, and then finally they got to a gold coffin that had King Tut in there. Um, on King Tut's face was a golden face mask and a wreath of flowers. Um, and, you know, here's an interesting kind of thing that happens with this. So they didn't have the kind of precautions that we have today. So today... When a tomb is found, it's aired out, they, they clean it, they wear safety protection. The, the people in the 1920s didn't do that. So what ends up happening is a lot of them died um, from mysterious illnesses. And it turns out what was happening is the mold, like 3,000 years of mold in the tomb was killing people with weak health. So what the newspapers started to say is like, oh, all these people are dying that went in King Tut's tomb. It must be the mummy's curse. Because on a lot of these tombs, the, the ancient Egyptians, like, to warn grave robbers would be like, anyone that messes with this tomb will die, like that kind of thing. Um, and that sparked the news stories. And that made, you know, this discovery even more famous. And even Lord Carnarvon himself died of a freaky... Thing. He dies of an infected mosquito bite. Um, because what happened is he had a mosquito bite, then he cut himself shaving, went into the tomb, that mold in the air got inside his mosquito bite, caused a massive infection, and he died. Um, but people were like, oh, it's the mummy's curse. But it didn't affect Howard Carter. He lived a long life and, you know, didn't die of it. So some people are like, there is no curse because it definitely would have gotten Howard Carter. He was, you know... The mastermind behind this. All right, I got to show you lots of pictures and stuff. So let me get my pictures ready here. What am I doing? All right, so this first picture that you're going to see, this is outside King Tut's tomb 
Um, so you can see all the people gathered around to check it out. Um, this is kind of a timeline of how things were discovered. So they were really careful as they removed things and sent it to museums. Um, that's the antechamber as soon as they walk, walked in, like where they thought was robbed. Chances are um, it, it was, you know, not messy like the way it is here. So this is um, a pretty interesting thing. This is the door that Howard Carter found, and this is the cartouche. That's a nameplate that says King Tut's name, and that's when he realized, oh, man, this is it. And th this rope that was made by the ancient Egyptians, um, and Howard Carter opened it thousands of years later. So there's Howard Carter. I know it looks like he's, he's enjoying comfy quarantine clothes there. And there is King Tut's sarcophagus. So what they would do is they would take the objects out and like dust them off, like you see there. Um, there's um, Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon, um, some other workers. Here's Tut there, and like you can see Tut's hand sticking out here. So here's where Howard Carter was not too careful. This is like pretty messed up. Um, so as we learned in mummification, there were amulets in between the wrappings and Howard Carter really wanted the amulet. So what he did is he took a knife, um, put it over a flame to get it hot and then cut through the linen to get to the amulet. And what he ended up doing is he badly damaged the mummy's body pretty badly. Like it was in pieces and yeah. So not great Howard Carter. Here's some of the artifacts they found. That was a dagger for King Tut. Pretty fancy. Um, there's some more decoration. This is one of those Shabti dolls that uh, you learned the Egyptians believe would come to life and be a servant um, in the underworld. Um, this is a fan, like the top of a fan, with a golden like decoration of, of you know, hunting. There you can see different animals that the person would hunt. So um, I got more to show you. I'm going to show you some more pictures here. All right. We got some artifacts here from King Tut's tomb. All right. First thing we have, I'm going to show you this, is a type of board game. Um, in ancient Egypt. It was a board game called Senate. Um, and this was in King Tut's tomb, probably for, you know, they were like, well, he's going to need something to entertain him in the underworld, so send him his board game of Senate. Um, it's very similar to the game like Backgammon. Um, this right here, you might be like, I have no idea what this is. It's a perfume vase so that King Tut could smell nice in the underworld. Um, over here, if you take a look at this, some of you might be able to figure this out. It's a bracelet. This is an interesting one. So what this is, is a headrest. So your head would go here. This is another cartouche, that nameplate. Egyptians like to write their names on things. Here we have his crown, one of his many crowns. Here's a statue of Anubis, the god of embalming. And then in King Tut's tomb was a chariot. Why he would need a chariot in the underworld? Your guess is as good as mine, but the Egyptians put one in there. All right, so that's just a few objects. Now, some interesting things about Howard Carter and his discovery. So King Tut, um, for a long time, um, there was this whole, like, conspiracy about whether or not he was murdered. And the reason why there was this conspiracy is um, there was, like, physical damage to King Tut's head. Um, and this theory came about in the 1960s because they did an X-ray of King Tut's mummy. And 
in the 1960s, they saw this blow to the back of the head and they were like, oh my gosh, did someone murder King Tut? Then um, in 2005, they gave King Tut's mummy a CAT scan and they realized this whole murder theory is garbage because the wound to the back of his head was not a 3,000 year old wound. It was from the 1920s. And what happened in the 1920s? Well, Howard Carter was rough with that mummy. So um, King Tut was not murdered. They actually think that he might have died um, because of an infected like leg that he broke. Um, so yeah, and you're going to see um, in the coming days some interesting things about the discovery of King Tut. There's some facial things in terms of what he may have looked like. Um, so yeah. That is a wrap on the discovery of King Tut.